what is up youtube today we're back with another guild war video and we are fighting against fidelis and uh, if you guys have been a long time viewer of my channel you'll know that i have a very infamous loss against uh fidelis uh which I lost to Falcon or Clary defense, so um, I kind of have a personal vendetta against them, kind of not, but um, hopefully we'll be able to go 3-0 today, and I'm pretty glad that we're fighting a relatively stronger guild, just so that the defenses are a bit more uh, realistic and it's not kind of boring for you guys. Uh, but without further ado, let us jump straight into the video. If you guys do enjoy, please drop a like and comment below, as it really helps me with the algorithm. Subscribe if you haven't already, and let's jump straight into the attack. All right, so for the first attack of today, we are going to be attacking Ruff, and uh, we're seeing a new Emolandi defense, which I have not attacked before, and I haven't really seen many defenses set up like this, so I'm kind of curious to see how it'll work. So it's going to be Ran, Emolandi, and Aiden, so I'm going to be running T. Crozette because there's two light units, so I want to have a dark bait. Now, I have moved a lot of his gear off to my RTA units, so he's definitely lacking a lot, like 18 wasted crit, 23 wasted stats and effectiveness, but nonetheless, he's just here to be a dark bait and push my aria and give some mitigation now my destina is going to be on a bulkier build because if it is a high effectiveness ran on like oath key or something the er is kind of wasted here so i want to definitely have uh, as much bulk as possible in case we do proc salvos um or just like an aid in s2 that just does extra damage with attack buff it could just be could things just can go bad right um, so i'm just having guardian ice crystals i have her on the cr push ee and um, Arya is going to be on Fairy Tale of a Nightmare because obviously Aiden has a lot of dodge chance. There's anti crit, and I just want to give her a reliable source of damage. Now I'm thinking uh, Rand goes first, and then we're going to be able to double push to Arya. We S three, and then hopefully uh, we'll have enough damage. Now I wouldn't really recommend running Arya because if she's hidden and it's double injury, like Aiden's on injury and the Emolandi's on injury, then you're probably gonna die. Uh, but just for the sake of testing, I do want to see how Aria, sorry, Aria works against these three units. Um, so yeah, that's why we're going to be going with the Aria team. Um, there's, I think we've had enough sample sizes of like Charlotte and stuff like that. And anyway, Fire Charlotte is not really going to be that great into Ran anyway, because if Ran has RNL and it's like a real Ran, like 310 speed, full damage, um, double RNL, your Charlotte might just die. Um, unlikely, but possible. Um, anyway, for the second round, it's going to be Zeo, Strays, and the Karina. So, and when you look at this, you're thinking probably like, oh, GP, Pavel, something like that. Um, I'm going to go for a different route. So I'm going to have uh, Conquer Lilius here on Nostalgic Music Box. And she's a 301 speed, 90 effectiveness, and uh, basically just attack release and print. Uh, I'm going to be running uh, as a hawk at 293 speed that you guys have seen in my previous video on penetration set. And uh, I will have Edward here on Sacred Scythe. And so the idea here is Zeo is going to move first into my Conquer Lilius. My Zahawk is going to be able to S2 to push my Conquer Lilius back up. I'm going to S3 into the Strays, which is going to proc the Karina. Karina is going to S3 into my Edward and going to throw it back. And then I'm just going to run down the Zeo with uh, my three units. Um, there's a chance that my Conquer Lilius does die when the Karina presses S3 if the Zeo does a lot of damage. But I'm going to hope that we're not going to die because I do have 20k HP and at 50% that's still 10k HP. I don't think the Splash will be able to do that much damage. Um, but realistically, there's only one way to find out. So let's jump into the first attack. All right, so it's MLDP Aiden and the Ran is 8,761 HP. So Ran's going to S2, S3 into us here. And it looks like... a. Uh, kind of like a hybrid ran the damage wasn't super high but it was okay so my destina is 210 speed if i want to get uh the cr and i'm going to push my aria here and if you're wondering if we take info and and uh during preseason we don't really um if you want to you can but it's not really mandatory uh, i'm just gonna s1 into the ran i could proc elbrus on the landy but fuck it and we're just going to press S3. And Aiden's going to slam into us, which is totally fine. We're okay with it. Uh, when we counter, we're probably going to proc MLDB. Uh, so Aiden's on 11,208 HP. We proc that. S1. So it's not a real rank because it also doesn't have 100 crit. That's something that we want to be mindful of. But the HP kind of shows that it is a real rank. So maybe it's just not 100 crit. So there's the fairy tale. Strips out the anti-crit off those two units, which is great. 
we're gonna be able to counter hopefully strip the okay we didn't we stripped the invincibility uh i'm just gonna go into the aiden uh the counter attack sucks because that reveals my t crozette so that's really unfortunate but i guess what can you do um okay so I think maybe the correct play would have been to S1 the Aiden since uh, Arya already triggered his S2, right? Yeah, his S2 was down. So I guess at this stage, I'd probably just hit the Landy. As of right now, I'm kind of feeling like Arya doesn't feel that great. Um, just because like stuff like this can happen. He procs Salvo, he S3s. Do I just insta-die? I do have Holy Sacrifice on Tikra Z, so it's not completely dead. Okay, so we have Holy Sac, we counter, Fairy Tail procs. I can. S2 Aria. Or should I S3? I think we S3, actually. I mean, the blind on the Landy is pretty good, but. The fact that they can counter and reveal my t, uh, t Crozet, it just makes this comp very unstable, in my opinion. And I think all of you guys would probably agree. So, I can push my Aria down, or I can wait one turn. They're never going to proc my Aria. So, I might as well save my Destina S2, so that when my Aria does have 4 Fury, or 4 Focus, I can S2 push her down to proc her S2. And I'm just going to S3 push the Aria here. Because I want to get defense buff up for my T-Crozette here. The turn order for the Aria doesn't actually matter. Um, it's mainly just getting the defense buff up so he lives. Proc Salvo maybe. He does Proc Salvo. Okay. That's fine because they're still going to be in front. Um, now I am going to push my Aria down. And we're going to Soul Burn S1. Which is going to proc counter, which is fine. And then we S2. This should kill. Pretty sure it kills. Because Fairy Tail is going to proc. The Landy's probably going to die. Yep, okay. So I think overall, Arya is okay, but not the best. Now, Zio is going to be 11.2k HP on Taga Hell's Ancient Book, I believe. And we saw that the Strays is on Benamaru Tachi. So obviously you can it's really difficult to get strays at like 293. So I was pretty confident in my speed on the Zahawk. So as we mentioned before, we're going to S2 cleanse the Conquer Lilius. And looking at how much HP that I have, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get out sped. Uh or sorry, uh one shot by the Karina splash. Um but we gotta take care of the strays first. Um so we just kill the strays. Okay, so strays is now dead. Karina's gonna proc to the front, she's gonna press S3 into the Edward. And let's see, it does it land the death brick? It does not. Oh, well, I mean it does, but it insta cleanses. So conquer Lilius doesn't die, which is great. So that means I'm gonna be able to S3 and then S2 if I wanted to. Uh, but since the Karina is baited right now, I could actually just S1 into the uh, the Zio. Because if he's attacked down, I'm pretty confident he's not going to be able to one-shot my Conqueror Lilius. But nonetheless, I'm just going to Soul Burn S3 into the Zeo. And with a 50% CR cut, I'm going to be able to cut down and then S1 the Zeo once. Oh, never mind. He, he's still faster than me. Alright, well the idea was there, I guess. So this is a full effectiveness Zeo, which means he has like no damage. So we'll just take care of him first. And then we'll leave Karina up. So we can just play Ping Pong. And then S1, we'll get Nostalgic Music Box procking. We have Continuous Healing, which is good. No Death Break. That's lame. S1, pull the Zahawk, please. Nice. Oh, so it is Counter Karina. Okay. And we Soul Burn S3, and the fight should be over. Yeah, so definitely GP's, GP Pavel could have worked too, but I guess... We'll make do with this as well, so let's move over into the second attack. Alrighty, so for the second attack of today, we'll be hitting X-Link, and they have Karina, Selene, and Arrowell on defense. So I'm going to be running Pillis here, which is going to be our premier dark bait for the two light units. That will be primarily Selene that's going to be going into him, or her. And uh, Achates is going to be on just some leftover gear from my Nightmare Raid teams, particularly Dien. Um, but basically, you just want to have her as 
kind of high bulk ER, um, just so that the Karina cannot one shot her. And then I have a Karina on here as well on Rocket Punch on a standard build, 2900 defense and above. Uh, the idea basically is Celine's going to eventually lose immortality on one of the turns, and then I'm going to be able to rip the Karina S3 and proc Rocket Punch and just kill her through everything. And then once it's 2v3, then I just kind of slowly whittle it down, and maybe I'll fast forward that part. Uh, but the main course of this attack is going to be the second team. So this is very interesting because APOC forces a unit to you to bring like a light unit, right? So things like a Selene or an Arrowell uh, or an F Maya, things like that, right? Um, but because there's Conqueror Lilius, you're not really able to do that. Right. So I'm thinking, well, what do we do then if I can't run a Doris or a Celine? Because what if the the, the speed tuning is a little bit weird? It, it could be awkward. Right. So here's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Arrowell. There's going to be the dark bait for the uh, a ravi but additionally the most important thing is he's going to be providing adamant shield and escort for our uh arch archdemon mercedes now i have emilia on a bit of a faster build you don't need to be this fast i think maybe 240 250 should be fine um arguably maybe margahara could be better but just for the sake of testing we're going to try guardian ice crystals and i'm also going to be having obviously ads so we have her on fairy tale of a nightmare um obviously you would put her on a counter build I personally have her on a speed build because my counter gear sucks. That's probably the weakness of my account. Um, so I'm going to be running Archdemon Shadow. And the idea for me is I want to seal the Emil Landy, uh, basically ASAP. And I want to seal the and just kind of take care of everything else. So if I seal the A-Ravi, she automatically loses a bunch of crit chance on her S2, as you know. And yeah, hopefully we'll be able to, to win with this. And Amelia is going to give us a lot of cycling and Arrowell is going to give us some uh, crucial stuns at certain points of the game. Uh, but just remember, uh, you cannot stun ML Landy. So just make sure you remember that. Um, But yeah, I don't know if the second team will work. This really is going to be a stress test. Uh, I personally love ADS, so hopefully it does. But yeah, only one way to find out. So let's jump straight into it. All right, so it's a Faseline, which is 8.6k HP. And the Karina is going to move into my Akades. I'll be really surprised if it death breaks. I don't think it will. All right, perfect. So, we do we S3? Uh, no, I'd say we don't need an S3. We'll just leave it. Pillis is most likely going to be stunned. And uh, KN, this is for you, all right? All right, there you go. You were saying that I don't do that anymore, but I got you, boys. All right, whoever's there, put the timestamp down in the comments. All right, so we're going to just S1 into the arrow well. Basically, we just have to wait for this barrier and this immortality to fall off the Selene. Uh, until that happens, we're not going to be able to press the S3 on our um, Karina. Now, I do want to proc the Karina timing. Uh, so one turn after barrier, if I S3 here now, that means that Karina is not going to push me 50. And Karina doesn't have S3 for one more turn, which means I can well, probably S3 here. Now, the airwell is just going to be going into the Pillis uh, permanent, permanently, so just wait. And the good thing about pairing Karina with Pillis is uh, Pillis' specialty change after four attacks, you do get defense buff. So oftentimes, if you don't get proc'd at 50% on one of the allied units like the Karina S2 requires, you can just rely on Pillis getting hit four times and then you can just throw the S3 and then with defense buff, bomb. Probably dead. Probably. Uh, I'm not going to S1 into the Selene because that probably won't even break the barrier. And now she doesn't have her uh immortality anymore right as we can see so i'm gonna go for a s3 onto the karina because if i land the provoke then we will get a 15 percent cr push on our entire team which you can see we did which is perfecto and now we're gonna s1 hopefully uh he doesn't death break okay now we're good we're all good all right so Celine now no longer has her buffs at all any buffs anywhere so now we're just going to proc the S3 into the Selene and she should be dead. And... Okay, yeah, even we didn't get the death break, but she still died, which is uh, perfect. And because the splash damage doesn't trigger the Karina, it makes this actually pretty good. Now, I obviously I'm going to have to hit the arrow well. I don't really want to push the Karina at 50 since it just makes this fight longer than necessary. But... I mean, we did check the ER on the Karina, and it looks like she doesn't have any. So if I do focus her with Soulburn S1 in the Karina, I actually think it's not too bad. 
see like there's a death break so maybe like two more attacks will be able to bring her down which is pretty good so overall i think uh karina and katie's pillars definitely feels pretty good uh, this is not going to be like a meta defense by any means right so don't get your hopes up um as i mentioned the main course of this attack is going to be the second team which is really what i'm here for i don't really care about this attack to be completely frank uh, she's just gonna bonk into my Katie's, and we're just gonna bonk into the Karina. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll speed it up so I'll see you guys uh, when this battle's pretty much over. <laughs> Alright, so I guess that's all done. Perfect. All right, now moving into our second attack, the main course. So we have Conquer Lilius at 18.9k HP on Nostalgic Music Box, as we can see. Now, um, gives the buff the barrier over to the Aravi. Okay, so I'm just going to get the CR, and I'm going to S2 push the Amelia to get the cleanse going right away. And hopefully we seal. Okay, beautiful, we sealed. If we proc, uh, oh, nice. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. So now we basically guarantee crit. Uh, and it, we can stun the uh, with the arrow wall now, which is perfect. Now, do I care if she has the first turn? Um, not really. Not really. Um, I actually don't know if the arrow S3 will stun or not. I'm actually not sure. Um, but since I'm not really in danger, I guess I just won't. Um, I don't really want to trigger any counters. So I guess I'm just going to go for the S1 on the Lilius. I actually procced Albrus. I go figure. Okay. So get the healing going here. Now she's going to pull a dual attack from the Conquer Lilius into my uh, ADS, which is not ideal. But uh, now he has immunity. That sucks. Uh, I mean, if that's the case, maybe we can seal the Aravid too. Hopefully proc a second attack. Oh my god, not the Elbrus, dude. Okay, so there's Elbrus. Decrease hit chance. Nice. So I guess let's find out if we can stun. I'm not sure. So let's see if we can stun. This is for science. So let's see. Okay, yeah. So the seal removes the stun sleep as well. I mean, you guys watching probably already knew, like, fuck Vig, you're a fucking idiot, obviously. But, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if it works or not. Like, don't hate, you know? All right, so we have enough souls. I'm just going to seal the uh, the Emilandi again, and then we're going to proc as the S2. Never mind, we're not going to proc the S2. Unlucky. Um, this Emilandi is going to get S3. Kind of scary, if you ask me. Dual attack. Uh-oh. Spaghetti-o. Am I dead? Oh my god. That was a lot of damage. And I don't even have a cleanse anymore, so I'm in a bit of a... Actually, I do have push. He has S3, S1. If I wait one turn, she S3, S1s. But then if it triggers the salvo, I could be in a really bad spot. So I'd rather probably just push her anyways. Right? I'd probably push her anyway, strip the attack buff. And then he's going to get Vigor attack down my ADS, but I have S3. So if I S3 and then I seal the Aravi again, we should be okay. Oh, fuck. Oh, my days. Oh, my God. The seal's gone now. This is bad. Yeah, this is not good. This is not good. Uh... I think the correct play is probably to seal. Because if I S3, I could proc Elbrus, a higher chance of procing Elbrus and counter. If I seal, I can at least cleanse with all this shit. I can cleanse with S3. She'll get a 50% CR. I can cleanse with S3 and then stun with Arrowwell. Okay, so I think maybe the option is, the play is probably to seal. Okay, or I just don't seal and I get countered and I just die anyways. Okay. Um... I am scared. I don't think I'm going to be able to tank another S3. I might just be dead, guys. Oh. 
My god. I'm dead. Yeah, I'm dead. Well, I guess... Yeah, this isn't very good. You should not do this. Alright, well, that has failed. <laughs> On to the third attack, I guess. Okay, so for our third and final attack, we'll be hitting Nothing Pants, and it's going to be Emma Landy, Illinav, and Arrowell. Now, I'm going to have T-Crozet uh, to tank the two light units, as you guys probably know. Uh, Holy Sack, which you guys saw in the first attack. We have Destina on the same build that you guys have seen on the previous attack, but we're going to put the Guardian Ice Crystal back on. And I'm going to be having Leaf here as our DPS unit. Now, I'm the plan is basically we're going to rush down the Illinav, so we're going to S1 push with my two units and then Soulburn S3 S1 into the Illinav and just try to kill. Um, if I don't kill, things are going to be really awkward. I'm, I'm going to start to get injured. And if it's an injury landy, it could be kind of awkward as well. Now, obviously, the very generic answer that you'd probably think of is probably like Shotgun DC. So Destina, Iceria, and Dark Corvus for this. But it's kind of boring. And like, what if it's too tanky? What if it's, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with that comp? So Either way, I think let's just try to go for maybe like a leaf angle. Maybe that's the safest, uh, in my opinion. Uh, for the second team, I'm just going to be going for like a straight out speed. So I'm going to be running my uh, Zeo uh, on Bloody Rose. Doesn't really matter, but just 260 speed. And I will be having Zahawk at 293 with the symbol of unity to hit the Aiden. And I will be having my Wanderer Silk uh, giving speed imprint. Now you may be thinking, well, Vic, you don't have a way of killing the Senya. I know that, but. We're just going to kill, right? Um, ZOS3, we're going to push the, the Senya. My Zahawk's going to outspeed the Ran, kill the Aiden. Uh, yeah, and we're good. Um, I'm actually going to put Sashe on my Wanderer Silk, because now that I think about it, it's probably better since she's already going to have a buff. Um, and we're going to go release Imprint on the Zeo as well, just so we have a bit more attack. And uh, assuming everything goes to plan, it should be fine. But if we lose, then... You guys can have my spot in talent list, I guess. All right, let's go. All right, so looking at it, I'm just going to S1 into this. And of, of course. Of course, my luck is they double counter. And she's on injury. It's Jover. It's so Jover. I'm. It's Jover. Oh, this guy actually has a trap. It's Jover. Yeah, did we lose? I think we lost, guys. My idea isn't really working, because if he Elbruses again and injures me, I'm probably dead. This is very problematic. I don't even think I'm going to be able to kill. Hopefully I can, but I don't know if I can. Okay, so at least we extincted. That's good. So 24.8k arrow well. And it actually was on Holy Sack. So it's counter Illinav with injury Landy. I see. Okay. Um, so if it's injury Landy, that means we can just run into the Landy and she'll never counter us, right? Which is perfectly fine for me. So we're just going to S1 into the Landy over and over and over. We're going to farm the souls for the, uh, for the Leaf so that we can eventually kill her. And this is going to bring her low. Okay. Looking all right so far. Injury's about to start stacking though, which I don't love. But we just keep going into the landy. Just just keep bonking the landy. Uh, we still have a holy sacrifice for our T Crozet, so I'm not too pressed about it yet. Uh, I will drop an S3 here though. Since if I can land a restrict, that'd be nice. Okay, no restrict. So he gets barrier again, which is kind of annoying, but um, it is what it is. And we didn't resist. It feels bad. We S1. And I'm actually going to push the Leith down. Because I want her to get another turn to proc the three omen stack. And I'm pretty sure we kill now. If not, then this is just going to drag it out. Uh, okay, perfect. Yeah, we killed. Awesome. So I guess, like, it's not terrible. This defense is actually pretty good. I think, what do, what do you guys think about this? What if instead of Holy Sacrifice on Illinav, what do you guys think about running double Elbrus injury? Like, if you have double Elbrus, I feel like that has some potential, no? Because 
Illinav on Elbrus, if you S3 with Leaf, if they're not running Shotgun DC, or maybe you folk, you try to force Dark Corvus on the second team, then I think maybe the Elbrus could be pretty good. Double Elbrus, double injury, max injury right away. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty decent if you're trying to trap Leaf. Um, but I think this is kind of where one of those instances where it's like you would have to look at how other people are attacking your defense and you would leave it as if you haven't changed it and then just change the artifact. It's cheap too, right? It's like 50k switch back and forth. Um, I think that's kind of viable. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to speed up the clip because this guy's probably dead here. So we're just going to move into the second one pretty soon. And if not, I'm just going to rope you guys with me. It is what it is. Not dead. Uh, just S1, I guess. Don't S3. Please don't have S3. If he has S3, you guys are here for a ride. GG's! We are going to be here for a bit longer. But yeah, no, nothing pads. If you watch this video, uh, I like the defense. The defense is actually pretty solid. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, we're just going to S1, I guess. I do have speed buff, so I should lap, and then we just kill. Beautiful. Now, this defense definitely only works in a small tower. Um, as a fort or a stronghold, it definitely wouldn't work. Alright, moving over into our second attack. Mm. Wow, my Ran outsped his... I mean, my Zahog outsped his Ran. By actually quite a bit. Uh, okay, I mean, if that's the case, I'm just going to S3 onto the Senya. And he's gonna need 210 yard to resist me, so we should silence. So he did silence, albeit you, we probably could have got 15%, but mine hits, mine crits, and my sil mine silences, right? So we're going to buff our Wanderer self because the S2 does allow us to dual attack the Ran after. And I'm just gonna run this into the Aiden, and it's gonna one shot him. Aiden's dead. And now Wanderer self on S2, we're gonna be able to just dual attack into the Ran, and should be dead. Beautiful. Very nice. And then we Soul Burn S1 into the Senya. And we actually crit, so it's all good. Nice. Beautiful. Alright, nice, clean, fast third attack there. And yeah, over and out. Alrighty, so that's going to sum it up for today's Guild War video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. I, I actually had a real lot of fun making this video this time because they're actually real defenses. There's ML Landy in every single defense, and I'm trying to pump out as much ML Landy offense attacking videos as possible i guess uh but note to self arc demon shadow into conquer lilius and emilandi is a terrible idea do not do that um but anyway yeah if you guys did enjoy please drop a like and comment below as i mentioned in the intro um talentless is obviously recruiting all the time i know there is ancient inheritance so you know understandably people are probably not really looking for a new guild but if you guys do want to get competitive when the season is coming around please do shoot me a dm or join my discord that is in the description below and yeah thank you so much for watching as always i love you guys and uh i'm uh i'm feeling good i'm feeling good so i'm kind of getting into my natural groove so let's uh let's let's get the ball rolling and i'll have a good rest of the week i'll see you guys uh tomorrow i'll make an rta video for tomorrow and then friday we'll have another good video so i'll see you guys then bye